Korea to Germany. From Alaska to Puerto Rico. All over the world, the United States Army is on the alert to defend our country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture. An official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Army bands are a great part of our military tradition. For music has lived with our fighting men ever since our nation began. Our first story on this week's pictorial report is about these army bands and the soldier musicians who make them great. High on the Palisades, overlooking the Hudson at West Point, the glorious historic inheritance of our United States Army has been preserved for all to see in the West Point Museum. Here are the battle flags of the Alamo, Verdun, Bataan, the muskets of the Massachusetts militia, the swords of Custer's valiant men. Wherever you look in this hall of memory, you will find a proud symbol of our tradition. Hey, did you see this? The bugle that ended the Civil War. It says it was used at the Battle and Surrender of General Lee at Appomattox, April 9th, 1865. Yeah. They say, uh, how many things do you figure you have in this museum? Oh, about uh, 5,000. Yeah, I bet you could fill a book with the stories behind them. <laughs> yes, I suppose we could. Many books. Though you can't get it down in words. What? Tradition. It's here, all around. But it's nothing that you can see or touch. Listen, an army band. Now there's something pretty difficult to put in a museum. But it's still tradition. A glorious tradition. Yes, music has lived with our fighting men ever since we began as a nation. In 1776, the fife and drum marched with men of Lexington and Concord to meet the British Redcoats. The tradition of military music carried on in the War of 1812. Through the Civil War. The Spanish-American War. World War One. Yes, on every battlefront, music has helped keep morale high. In World War II, army bands performed in all the theaters of operation. The road to victory seemed shorter, easier. The army bands play wherever troops gather in peace and war. And also play for just plain John Q. Public. Through the years, army bands have been part of a colorful history, furnishing music for important presidential functions, adding brilliance to ceremonies of state. All the precision, skill, and blending of instruments doesn't happen overnight. It takes planning, rehearsing, and training. But the real musician never objects to the work. And there is no magic formula for success, no overnight shortcut. It's a question of sticking to the job day after day. Chicago Tribune.
The musician practices many hours alone with the four walls as his audience. There's a lot to learn. Often the march to the Army Parade Ground starts from high school. The Army offers many opportunities to continue a career in music. However, before you're a musician, you learn soldiering first, starting with basic training. Before basic training is completed, auditions are given for future bandsmen. These are anxious moments to the aspiring young musician. You better report back to your outfit now. Yes, sir. Meade, you're next. How about a G major scale? All right, let's have a D minor scale. All right, let's try this. Let's start right uh, here. After basic training, the bandsman reports directly to the band training unit for specialized band training. All the details of what makes a band click are crammed into the course. Intricate drill formations are studied and practiced. Inspect your guard, sir. Then the formations are tried with instruments. The manual of the baton is studied, for sometimes the bandsman may be called to fill in as a drum major. Instruction at the band training unit goes quickly, and the bandsman is then ready to be assigned to any band of the Army. It may be in the airborne units, an armored division, the infantry, or wherever a band needs his type of instrument.
After one year of service in an Army band, the bandsmen may qualify to attend a five-month advanced course at the Navy School of Music. The education of a bandsman never ceases. Harmony, ear training, counterpoint fill up the study hours. Classics are also in the bandsman's repertoire. This excerpt from Secuntula, an Oriental Overture, is played by the First Army Band. Army band is as versatile as a jack of all trades. It is always ready to fit any mood, any occasion. It travels over a world at war or at peace, at work or at play. The vigorous strains of America's music stimulate the sale of bonds the nation over, from famous cities to obscure hamlets. It sings out Uncle Sam's call to arms steps up our vital recruiting program to the soldier who has died. The Army Band honors him with a quiet and reverent elegy. It greets our fighting men to new ports of call with a rousing welcome. The endearing spirit of the Army Band is universal. It soars from the far west Far East, where it gladdens the hearts of our faraway neighbors with its lilting language. The same tender spirit extends to the sick, comforting them and speeding their recovery. And the hale and hearty who crave life and excitement. No matter where it plays, indoors or out of doors, the Army Band can match the emotions. It offers the traditional music of the gridiron in the history of the pigskin. The throb of the Army Band has sparked many a dash to the goalpost and victory. And at West Point, the band remains true to generations of history. From each instrument, you can hear the same notes of pride and glory that have poured out since the famous Spirit of 76. So you see, even though music isn't something that you can touch, like, uh, well, like one of the trophies there, it's a great part of our heritage, and it will always be a part of the American way of life. For wherever the bands play, they hit a note of high morale and deliver a boost to Americans everywhere. Like the Army bandsmen, there are many other specialists in the Army today. And on the beautiful island of Etajima in Japan, there is an unusual school where other Army specialists train for their role in the big picture. An Army school on an island paradise. This is Etajima off the coast of Japan. Every month, the Army specialist school at Etajima graduates thousands of servicemen who are trained in the many highly technical jobs which a modern army calls for. 
Ahead of these student soldiers as they march off to class each morning are hard hours of special training. It might be the court reporting class, where men and women of the services learn the highly skilled job of taking shorthand and typing, which will help them get used to the atmosphere and job they will enjoy after graduation. Toward the end of the course, mock trials are held, with the students taking the part of the presiding officials. Soon these students will be sitting in real military courts of law. Chemical warfare is another branch of combat which it is hoped will never have to be put to the test. But as long as it remains a threat, we must know all about it and have men ready to handle it. Strange garbed men, covered from head to feet in protective clothing, move into a simulated contaminated area. They must know how to recognize and identify the chemical agents, and they must learn how to decontaminate them. It's dangerous, tricky work, and even while training, precautions must be taken by the students. And, of course, the many specialists who go to make up the radio and signal men of the Signal Corps receive their on-the-job training at Etajima. From the pole climbing exercise in the training compound, where the skilled linemen of communications are trained, to the real thing on the side of a Korean hill is a small step for these students. All forms of wire laying are taught and practical use of field equipment is all part of the program. The field switchboard and its intricate connections must be mastered. An actual field problem using a portable wireless set gives Signal Corps students a chance to increase their efficiency. One of the largest courses at the school is the engineer field work class. Here, the students learn how to maintain and repair the heavy engines and vehicles which the engineer corps use. Men who drive and handle the tractors and bulldozers must know these engines inside and out and must be able to keep them running. Bling of the heavy equipment. Crane shovel, tractor, bulldozer. It's all the same to these fellas. Skill is the password, safety is the rule. Under the watchful eye of the instructor, the student operator practices on the crane shovel. Handling one of these babies calls for skill and judgment, and practice is the only way you can learn. Under the curious eye of a native farmer, modern earth-moving machinery is put through its paces. A modern army on the move must keep its roads open, whatever the obstacles. And specialists like these are the men who do it. Whether it is carving a road out of a hillside or crushing stones for a highway, the men of the engineer equipment class are highly trained for their technical jobs. Napalm, the jelly gasoline bombs used in Korea, are dangerous if handled improperly. At the specialist school, a class learns how to use this effective weapon. A napalm bomb is highly dangerous, and every precaution must be taken as it is moved into position. The instructor goes over the details time and time again. Finally, the bomb is detonated.
students get a chance to watch a demonstration of the famous flamethrower in action. This is the work of a specialist, trained to use the modern weapons of a modern army. But it's not all training at Etajima. Pleasant and colorful dining rooms are available for the men to dine in. There is no limit here on the amount you can eat. You can have as many helpings as you like. A cigarette tops off the meal. At Academy Club, all kinds of recreational facilities are provided. Once a week, a dance is held, and the students make the most of the opportunity to relax and have fun. The men's spiritual and recreational needs are well catered for. Natives join with the students in holy worship. And here in the chapel, the differences vanish and they worship as one. The post chaplain is a close friend. His comforting words narrow the gap between this faraway land and the men's thoughts of home. And after hours, the sports fans get their chance. It might be a game with a local tea house nine. Baseball is a popular sport on the island, and even if it isn't big league, it's good exercise and relaxation for men who have worked hard all week. For the swimmers, a large pool is available at the school. These kinds of facilities, coupled with the natural surroundings, make Etajima an army island paradise. Or there is an afternoon of seeing the sights and taking pictures. Or a trip through the local market to buy curios for home. Perhaps a toy for a younger sister. And for those who want, there is sailing in the harbor. Sails fleck the horizon, and in the distance, the tori at Miyajima rises up. It's a paradise setting for the Army's specialist school, the largest of its kind in the Far East. Our last story on this week's pictorial report is a Korean story about which no big headlines have been written. The story of aid to the Korean people. All over Korea, the young people sing. They are singing thanks and praises to someone who has come into their hearts, the American people, who sent them gifts of food and clothing. It began when the SS New Rochelle victory put into Seoul with the first shipment of Korean aid packages since the armistice. American embassy officials formally presented the gift to the Korean people. But to the crowd, at the welcoming ceremony, it was more than food. It was friendship. And their president, Mr. Singman Rhee, came to make a speech. In a few simple words, he expressed the thanks of his people. But somehow, the children were able to say it better. They said it in the best way they knew how with a dance of thanks. Then from out of the holds came the food, thousands of bags of rice. 
rice to be distributed across Korea in village and town. A heartfelt gift from the people of America to the people of Korea. And in the next few days, the trucks began to roll across Korea carrying the bags of food and clothing. In Panchon, nearly the whole village came out to welcome the gift. They gathered on the high school grounds to celebrate the fifth anniversary of their independence and the arrival of the Eisenhower packages. The Panchon County Chief, Mr. Sook, received them. It was the same thing at the city hall in Seoul. From the trucks, the bags of food and clothing were carried into the hall for distribution. Mayor Kim received from General Taylor 10 truckloads of food and clothing, and a grateful people watched and said thanks. All over Korea, the same thing was happening. The Korean people opened their hearts, and in the schools, the children sang songs of praise. Even though the fighting has stopped, there is still a great struggle in Korea, a struggle to rehabilitate. The American people and our government continue to help the Korean people in their fight back to recovery. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us again next week when we'll have another look at The Big Picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.